these are the latest uh, two mice, uh, number 17 and 18. And these two, I let uh, two young ones go um, yesterday and two more replace them. I think these are still finding their way out of what used to be a nest in the house because I had removed the adults. Um, they're both old enough to be released. They've both been jumping. And, I mean, people may think I'm crazy, but, you know, they sell pet mice at, um, well, locally it's, um, I want to say Petco, but it's, it's a pet, an, another name. Um, but anyway, you can buy a mouse for about $7, and the mice that they sell are house mice not deer mice or um, field mice, or they develop them from house mice, which are also the type that go to labs. Um, and I'm actually having a horrible time trying to identify these. Deer mice and um, white-footed mice, which the CDC says are actually two different subspecies, I thought they were the same, um, the deer mice have a, a white sides on their tail, and none of the mice I've had here have had any white on their tail. And one website said that house mice can actually have a cream belly, and I thought um, a whitish or cream color on a mouse meant it was a white-footed mouse. So there are all these subtle little variations like, um, supposedly, and I forget which is which, but the house, either the house mouse or the deer mouse has hair on its tail, and I can't get close enough to find out if there's hair on those tails. And these two have pink ears, um, when the two I let go yesterday had gray ears that match their coloring. So, um, I have no idea what these are. Um, the good news for me is that the CDC says, and Massachusetts, the state government website, says there's been no hantavirus in Massachusetts to date. So I feel a little bit better. Um, but I started to say, at, and I'm making a video of them so you can watch them, and I appreciate opinions. If you've ever watched a mouse, I'm wondering if there's something about watching mice that actually helps with PTSD. Now, having the mice come through the house like this has been completely overwhelming, pain in the neck. Um, I also had a bathroom wall collapse um, yesterday or the day before, and they can't repair it for a couple of days. and. We were talking about if it, if it collapses further, and of course now I've got this fear image of the wall's going to collapse and a thousand mice are going to come out of the wall, um, which they've assured me won't happen because of where the, the wall is. But anyway, um, I had to let the two mice go yesterday that I'd had for about 24 hours. I think there's some kind of a calming effect with watching them which is why I'm making this video. Um, and I would appreciate opinions. A lot of people hate mice, get creeped out immediately, but I'm wondering if watching their activities and watching the fact that, I mean, they'll go in the tube, they'll, they have this whole little organization set where right now they're cleaning themselves, then they'll go to sleep, then they'll get up in like a half an hour, they'll find something to eat, get a drink of water, then they go back to sleep, then they try to jump. I mean, they have a routine. And I truly am wondering if um, watching mice reminds people with PTSD of their own routine. Recently, there was a man um, who hurt a child um, the child wouldn't take his hat off for the Pledge of Allegiance, and the man slammed the kid to the ground, and the kid ended up with 
head trauma. And um, I was reading one of the military websites that was talking about it, and the, the man is actually a veteran who had traumatic brain injury. So that's a lifelong disability, and of course I've been thinking about the whole situation, and no one should ever hurt a child like that. But the man thought um, the common rhetoric was telling him to discipline people that weren't respecting um, either, the, I, I guess it was the Star Spangled Banner. So anyway, I'm thinking, well, the guy should have a service dog. And then I was like, he probably can't be trusted with a service dog because he'd be slamming the service dog down on the ground for some reason, you know? So I'm, I'm trying to think of companions for people with brain injuries, and as odd as it sounds, I wonder if watching a mouse, having a pet mouse that goes through a daily routine would be helpful. And, um, you know, people, you can just keep going, keep going right by this if you don't like mice. I understand that a lot of people don't like mice. I'm not always crazy about them either. But do you see how watching these two, um, just if you feel like commenting, is it calming to watch them go about their business all day? In this video, which you only get a very little clip of. Now the older one is further away and is brownish and the younger one is closer and is gray. And um, I don't know, a couple of the websites had said that um, house mice can be gray or brown or light brown, um, but then the CDC mentioned that deer mice are grayish when young and turn brown as older. But the, the whole clue to deer mice is um, there was something, some specific thing. The white-footed mice, their feet are white. And all the mice that have come through here have had pink feet. Um, but the deer mice, I think it was the white on their tail that was the defining factor for them. There's no white on these tails. So if you get past the cute, or hate factor, and then, um, now these two are probably from the same nest, and look at the size difference. They're very social, is what I'm getting at. Even if you only have one, it goes about its business as if it's running the whole show. Um, I think overall, watching them in their social behavior is positive. 